Yo, what is up? My name is Sven and today I present to you the best 2x2 in Rust. Now this is not just a normal 2x2. This base is made to be efficient and cheap and therefore it has 9 TCs in total, splitting the upkeep mostly. Now this 2x2 features basically everything you'd need in a base. Is it the best for offline raid protection? Not really, although it does have a bunker. Now with that said, I would like to remind you all that once again this base design is made for online raid defense. And after using this particular design for 3 months, I can say that this is definitely one of the best I have ever made. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to build it. First, we are going to talk about the features itself. And I'm also going to show you the base. Then shortly, we are going to talk about the upkeep and building costs. And after that, I'll show you guys how to build this base. Now, of course, there's a couple of things that you should know about this base before you consider building it. First of all, I'd like to explain that this base design is made for online raid defenses. Most of the design choices I made are based on that and not on making the base as expensive as possible. Now, this means that I highly recommend you should only be building this base if you're playing an active wipe with an active group. Now, in my opinion, it is very manageable in upkeep, let alone say you could probably do this easily with four people, if not three. Now, I've used this base design and many variants for the past three to four months in Rust. And so a lot of design choices came from my experience itself. Now, I would like to note here that you should see this exact base design as a YouTube version. There's a bunch of alternative versions you can make, and I would like to inspire all of you to make your own variants. This version is mostly focused on being as cheap as possible to build, but depending on your wipe and playstyle, there's definitely some changes you should probably make. One of the best tips and examples I can give here is that you should probably add another floor above your main loot. The main core bottom 2x2 two two is definitely not the most practical as a starter base and I would say that's the only downside of building this base. Now there is a bunker on the bottom floor and because of that it was kind of hard to fill in the actual 2x2. Two two. There's a bunch of ways you can do it and I would like to inspire you guys to do your own ways but for me I definitely like a lot of storage and I'm definitely not a fan of ladder hatches though since we have a bunker and since this core on the bottom is not going to be our main loot anyways it's fine to use these ladder hatches. This 2x2 features a double layer of inner peak downs. And on top of that, I've optimized the outer layer of peaks for stability. Now this particularly goes against all instincts. And as you can see in the design, the way I laid out the corners of them with the windows and frames is definitely different than anything before. There's just windows. This design choice is mostly done to the fact that most people online raiding these days are just going to pummel your base. And if the peaks would be triangles, they would crumble instantly. Now, as they would crumble instantly, there's no point to even have them in the first place. And so I rather completely close these peaks in. Now, because of this high mobility in the outer layer of peaks, there's a very high chance raiders will be running around here, in which the, as how I would like to call them, ankle biters, work extremely well. Now, last thing of the peaks is that this base features multiple ways up and down from your peaks from both your inner and outer layer. This is extremely important. Your inner core should never be the only way up into your peaks. Now this base features a very unique and new 2021 shooting floor, something I've covered already in the past week on my channel. I'll be linking that video about the wide gap explanation in the description and in the cards. Now this base features a wide gap shooting floor combined with corner peaks that are all on their own TC making it 8 TZs in total for just your shooting floor. Summarized up, the wide gap shooting floor is insanely overpowered to use. There's basically only upsides and just to sum that up, we're talking about wide gaps function as takeover TCs. Because they're on their own TC, the upkeep is very low. It's very easy to get high stability on your wide gaps and so your peaks or shooting floor won't crumble. And on this base particularly, because of the bedroom that I've created, there's actual cover from potential raid bases and you can focus 
on people in your compound only without getting shot from angles from a potential raid base. But the corners itself are also very unique, something I've never seen anyone do in the past. And with the horizontal window embrasures, there's head glitch pots in which you can crouch and potentially hold raiders from breaching your base. Now, the roof on this base is very open. You could potentially add another floor, as I mentioned earlier, and you should probably have roof peaks. Although in Rust 2021, roof peaks don't actually matter. It's all about making your roof secure with turrets, and there's basically no way anyone can ever raid you top down. Now, the roof itself I added in the middle is just for extra honeycomb on the main loot. And once again, if you want to, you should probably add another floor of the, on this base design. Now, the top area of the base is more something that you might have seen in the past. Although with one of your bedrooms being on the shooting floor, from the shooting floor down, you're going to have a way to peek into your inner peaks and to hold your main loot room door. Now, that's basically where I sum up why this is the best 2x2 two two you can have. The mobility and peak angles in this base are insane. There's so many different peak angles that you can potentially kill raiders from. And that is why I think this is the best 2x2 two two you can build up to date. Now let's talk about upkeep and building costs. Now boats will be considered with all doors and embrasures placed just like how the base is on the video. When it comes to build costs, you're going to need about 90 to 100k metal frags and about 20 to 30k stone. Of course, if you make everything HQM that I made HQM, you're gonna need between four and 500 HQM. Now, when it comes to upkeep, it's actually very manageable because of the multi TCs. The four corners cost the lowest and you can get easily over seven day upkeep in those. They're all four 933 metal frags and about 400 stone each. So you have to do that times four. When it comes to the middle parts for the white gap shooting floor, that's another four. It's about 400 stone and about 2.5k metal frags each as well. Now totaling up, the main TC in this stage is 6k stone and 24k metal. But once again, that is also with all the garage doors and all the other deployables placed. In total per day, I would say it's averagely about 35,000 metal frags and about 6,000 stone a day to upkeep this base. All right, now let's jump into the build. All right, now once again, we're going to build straight away in the material that it should be in the end on the final build. Also, you do not need a direct flat spot, although it would be very useful to build the base on. Now, another thing that you have to keep in mind is that this base is not really buildable from a starter. Although if you have a little two by two somewhere on the side of where you want to build and just start from there and build up the main two by two later on, that's definitely possible. You don't need ladders or a ladder hatch BP, although it is very useful to have definitely ladder BP. This base is floor stacked, so we're going to start off the build by doing a classic floor stack. I like to do my floor stacks like this. Now I got a lot of questions on my last base build about floor stacking and the way I do it. The way I do it is more of like an experienced way. There's some very nice tutorials on YouTube, especially the one by Tamura, which I'll link in the cards on this video, in which you can definitely find easier ways on how to get a floor stack. Now from the floor stack lower part, we're gonna build two triangles. And then we're going to actually make the actual two by two. We're gonna remove that part, but not the higher foundation. And we're gonna add a triangle there and remove that. Now, I'm gonna add full walls all around on the two by two. And on the outside for now, we're just going to be placing a frame. Now this frame doesn't have to be metal. So we're gonna make it stone like this. This is just so that the frame connects this floor stack to the actual base. You can place your TC in any corner and we're gonna have three frames here. We're gonna complete it off with some floors on the roof. And for the TC room, in case you forget, you can add a triangle on the outside with a floor like that, do floor like this, and then have the triangle and remove all of this. Now up here, we're gonna add a circle around we're going to make that metal. Actually, we're going to make that armor too, because this will all be part of the bunker. And we're going to add a frame right there with a ladder hatch. And if you don't have a ladder hatch yet, you can add twig stairs here, or you can just have a ladder going up. Now, let me just show you guys the bunker. Place it right here. Place your roof like that. Upgrade the roof to armor. Log out down here. Make sure your bags are down here. Bunker is sealed. Bu open the bunker. Destroy this twig. Bunker is opened. As you can imagine, right now, the base would be very immobile in a way. Um, it's not really a nice base to live out of yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to add half walls all around except on that one spot right here. As you can see it's crossover from the ladder hatch. Now I like to have nine furnaces in this square and it's actually possible to do so but it's very tedious. If you have the time definitely do it. Although if you don't it doesn't really matter you can just close this off 
and put furnaces in here later on. Oh yeah, and make sure the garage doors on the bottom right here are closed. Now, as you can see, we can successfully place those half walls with having nine furnaces in here. We continue with walls around, except for where the furnaces are, we put a single door. And this is very preference based. Uh, what you can do is you can put a loot room like this. You can also do it like that. Or I'm not a fan of at all using ladder hatches. Though in this space it's kind of required because it's a little 2x2 two two and I wanted to have a bunker. And since we have the bunker and it will cost 16 rockets to get down there either way, no matter the ladder hatch. I think it's fine to have ladder hatches like this. From the outside the base will be looking something like this. Now because of the layout of this base, it depends on what you like. I'm going to add a door right here with a window. And later on it's important because of the floor stack that... This is all gonna make sense, but for now, just leave it like that. We're now gonna worry about the actual outer ring and continue the floor stack. So what you do is from whatever triangle you had, you put a square. We're gonna do a classic ring here. So we're gonna do two triangles from the square, square to triangle, square. Where you want your rays in, that's totally up to yourself. Although I recommend two rays into your first, into your inner layer of peaks. Now we're gonna do one, two, three, four five walls we're gonna continue building the peaks up one more wall and then another wall and on the inside of the peaks we're gonna add frames and we're gonna just continue frames up until the third floor as well so you should have something like this now for two sides i like to have little side peaks with windows so what you can do is you can do something like this make sure you do first the actual hatch and then two windows and we can do the same on the other side now on the inside we're gonna do this and no worries you can still place this wall right here so don't worry about your peaks Now on the corners there, for now you could put the twig over just so you don't fall in. But later on, of course, once you get them, place triangle legged ladder hatches in here. We can also put two frames like that. Now you want to have to decide where do you want your way out to your peaks. And I just want to clarify that this jump up right here could be hard to do. And so it does help to put a square floor like that wherever you're going out to your peaks. So what you can do is you can continue with half walls going around. Except for the part where you want to go out. Now you could leave it into a corner. You could also wall it off one more time. Though we're not going to be able to place a frame here due to the floor stack overlapping in a second. Once you're done with that, you can floor off the rest. Could def potentially put a turret here facing that way. Just to make things more secure. Or you could just add more low walls. Now it is of course very important to secure your peaks. And so we're going to have to continue. And we're going to do a wall every time in the middle. And two windows on the sides secure off your windows if you do have vertical embrace or horizontal embrasure place them already you could also temporarily add glass in there going to need two ladder hatches once again and in this case we're going to be putting them right here and right here like that put them facing that way and now we are going to wall off the rest or floor off As you can see when we're in here, you can see that this space is relatively open. Now to secure the base a little bit more, we can add two more doors on the top going outwards. That, like that. I know people can pick in, but no one is going to pick in if they know there's ladder hatch there. It literally doesn't matter. So in the 2x2 two two itself, we have something, you're, you should have something like this. If you feel like you can't really pass these corners nice, you can also rotate one side like that. It will be a lot easier. At this point, your base is actually defendable. Now, I recommend once again not having it too close to that door. You can either have it here or here. Technically, here is better. And let's mirror it and add another one on the other side. So we wall off the rest. And we keep actually walling until the third floor. So we wall two more floors above this. And once you're on this height, you can actually wall one more time. So there's four walls going around. Now, once you've gotten your walls like this, we're going to add frames just to make it easier later on to build the peaks. We're going to do frame, 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 window. And the same goes here. Once you've done these frames, what you can start doing is you can close this off. Now on the corners here, we want a half wall. And add a frame like that. Now that one is not going to stick. So we have to do the square first. Then you can remove this. So you have something like that. Little jump down on each corner that's lower. Once again from the inside you can see. Anyone that's on your peaks using them. And you can potentially shoot them. I forgot to mention it is nice if you have a way down and up to your peaks from the corners. From your outer ring. And so for two of them you should probably place a ladder hatch in the corner. 
You can mirror that out so we can have one here and then one on the exact opposite. So make sure that these ladder hatches are facing opening towards the wall. So like, like that. Because that way you can actually get a ladder placed on the wall. So once you're done with this, we're going to wall in the peak floor again. And for your core here, we're going to add a little buffer. And that is to increase stability, first of all. And second of that, to prevent people from potentially coring from the bottom. Now in the corners, you're going to want to place frames like that. You're going to want to close them off with floors on top. First of all, you're going to have to have two metal frames like that with both walls facing this way. Also, we're going to continue our buffer upwards. So we're going to half wall the core again. Put floors on there. Now, I like to have a stair here, although it is very preface based what you like. You can, for example, also have a ladder hatch. I just like to have a stair and the reason that the frame is metal is because there will be armor doors here as you can see we can fit easily four bedrooms here i like to center it out like that and like that and of course put walls from the top this should all look something around this i use metal doors for the bedrooms and you can close off the rest except where the stairs are that now you're gonna want to decide how many ways you want up i like to have four although you can also have two you can put one there and then here and then here and then here so it's symmetrical clockwise you can also remove two and just have two now what you want to do on the corners you want to put low walls on that square that we placed earlier we're gonna add a frame like that for extra stability and we're gonna close the rest off with floors now let's just go and secure main loot. Easiest way is to just build an entire ring. And for now, add a floor on top, closing it in. Make sure you follow the floor below here. Of course, we want to secure the base. We're going to put frames like that. The final thing to secure the base for now, minus the shooting floor, is to put floors on top of here. Depends on what kind of doors you add here. Any doors that directly lead towards the outside, I like to use double doors. Now we're going to do the external shooting floor, the white gap shooting floor, and the corner TCs. Now there's a couple of strategies that you can apply here. Uh, we're, go we're gonna do the same on each corner and the same on each middle part. So I'm only gonna do once on each side. So first of all, the corners, you could start with squares like that and just have them connected to your base. I like to have turrets in these corners and so what I usually do is something like that and to maintain stability I follow the frames all the way from the bottom up. People definitely could spider-man jump up here but if you have enough turrets in your compound it is fine. If you want to save upkeep which I highly recommend, you don't want to do any of this, you want to do the following. You want to place this square right here, remove that one. And then we're going to multi-TC this square and we're going to offset it once to the west, in this case, and once to the north. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 squares out and a final triangle. This is basically like any multi-TC step that you do, any multi-TC part of your base. I'm going to build back half moons again. And so at this point, we do two triangles like that. Now we've only offset it towards the north, so we need to offset it one more time towards the west. Because as you can see right now, we probably can't even... Uh, we can build, but it might even connect. So we're going to do the exact same, but then towards the west. So eight squares and then back. But this can be a very tedious job because you have to offset twice. And so in total, you're going to have to do work for eight multi-TCs. So you do is on the, on the outside, you put two half walls. On the inside, two frames. Put the floor on top. And you keep building up with half walls until you reach... This floor right here. So you match these frames. Those actually don't even have to be metal. You can just have them in stone. Two windows. We're going to have a floor. And we're going to do two more windows with two half walls on top. And we're going to do two frames. Like that. As you can see, this corner is completely separated from the entire base. Now, of course, this thing needs its own TC. So we're going to do one square like that. So we have one square, two square in total three squares in total four squares in total 
and then we're going to place the TC and you should be able to place the TC on the fifth square like that. I do a triangle usually like this, place the TC right there. I window that off. Obviously that TC is not connected to there yet. So we're going to want to do frames like that. And now the whole thing is connected. What you can also do is do this and have another turret right there watching this corner of your base. You apply this on all four on, on the other three corners as well. All right now so once we're done with all four corners as you can see each corner has its own TC and is very manageable upkeep. We're gonna start with the wide gap shooting floor. We're gonna repeat that same thing on all four sides. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do one and then you guys can figure the rest out. If you haven't watched my wide gap explanation video I definitely recommend you to watch it. It explains in five minutes why wide gaps are becoming rust meta and why they are so insanely overpowered so from this door or from this straight wall you're gonna go out two triangles and a square and then you're gonna do three half moons with a triangle on the end you're gonna remove everything that you just placed except the triangle on the end and from the triangle on the end you're gonna build back with squares once you've done that you add another square on the left you remove all of this and then we're gonna put triangles on the end here and on the sides, kind of like towards the base. This is the whole foundation layout. Now for the TC, we're gonna do triangles like that and you're gonna do one, two, and three, and you should be able to place the TC right here. Put the window like that. If you wanna secure it more, you could even do this and add a potential garage door there. Now, for the actual white gap shooting floor, well, you're going to want to do this and this. So you're going to have these frames. And you can also, for extra stability later on, add these. Although they're not required, I would highly recommend them for the extra stability. That way later on you can actually make some parts of your shooting floor armored. So, we continue up. Once we reach one floor under the actual shooting floor, we're going to do a little, little house, I like to call it. Uh, or like, it's a bedroom actually. We're done like that. We continue with the frame there and the frame there. And we built, of course, the frames in here too. And we built triangles in the middle and squares on the sides. On the side sides, like from the corners, you put two triangles facing the actual base. For the actual frames, you're going to do a frame in here with a garage door. You can put two beds there, two boxes under there. And this window here allows you to peek towards the base in case they try and pummel your base top you can potentially hold and watch the ladder from the back in here we're gonna have to add frames as well like that and we're gonna add frames here you can add you can actually add a wall or a window here whatever you like with a little ramp like that and we tip off the roof to squash now for the rest, we continue the inner frames up. You can actually leave those stone if you want to, as long as you make the actual roof metal. And you can continue on with the actual roof here, closing it all off. Now you can actually make these corner roofs also metal. Of course, there needs to be deployables, deployables and all that. But one thing that's very important to have is the double door right there, always being open. As you notice, you can fall through here. It could be nice, can also be very bad. And so you want to kind of like just close that off siren lights and the same goes for up here. Now I kind of forgot to mention but it would be nice to at least have two ways up to your roof. So on two of these corners or on two of these longer sides, you're going to want to put ladder hatches. Now at this point in the build, I want to give a little reminder here that you should never ever be building exactly what I'm doing. I want to force, I, I hopefully can, can, can allow you guys to, to get your own ideas with the base design and for example where you decide to have main loot how you want to have main loot where you want to have your jump ups how tall you're going to make the base maybe even add honeycomb those are all things that i want you guys to do yourself because if you're going to be building this base one-on-one -on -one, people will find the base on youtube and they will know exactly how to raid you and now this particular design, because of the height and because I'm trying to make this base as cheap as possible for the YouTube video, um, it is actually one floor to get into the main loot right now. But something that I like to do that I want to inspire you guys to do as well, and at least think, of, think about it in that way, is people, in my opinion, people don't like roofs. You could even add a half layer in there, but 
not 100% required. And we're gonna close off the roof like that. And you could even add walls in between here because of the square roofs. The uh, walls will basically become smaller as you can see like that. So we do, we do this all the way around. And as you can see, we can fully close it off. And it, it looks weird, I know, but it's just one of the many things you can do to alter this base design and to make it harder for raiders to potentially raid you while still using my base design from YouTube. Now, I like to keep the upkeep as minimal as possible. And so I try to force myself to put windmill towers on the external TCs and not on the actual main base. So one thing that you can do for the roof is since we have so much stability, we can add a roof here, here, here and here. And on each corner, we can do a half wall with a floor where we can put a turret on there and then the roofs like that. Now that's one way to do the roof. There's basically a billion other ways to do the roof. Now for the corners, uh, it depends on it depends on what you want to do. For example, you could do your windmill towers. If you want to have eight, you could do triangle ones here. Um, and if you can't, you can just build one like that and put a windmill that way. You can also do them on the corners. Although on the corners, you have to be careful with stability. If you can't place that floor there, you can just do this to add stability to it now just to finalize this base design for main loot i'm actually gonna build everything in metal because why not um also just want to point out here that this wall this wall this wall and this wall should be armored and the ways in can be like that once again you can add a ladder hatch there if you want to depends on how you like your loot for example what you can do is you can have a loot room like that and then open one like that and then we mirror it so we add another one right there now that was basically the build now, I'm not going to be featuring a compound or anything else inside of the compound. Although there's one last little tip I have to give other than putting the turrets in these little corners. Is that you could potentially always add something like that. And have another turret in there. Alright, now that is it for this one. I do once again hope that you guys like this design. And I do hope that you guys do get rated in this space because I haven't unfortunately this thing just looks too scary but i also hope that now that the video is out maybe more people will start to raid the base i have a lot and not just a lot but an insane amount of upcoming base designs that i want to share with you guys and this is just the tip of the iceberg so if you want to see more you can expect a lot more make sure to subscribe to my channel and of course it can't harm to leave a comment and like on this video as well i want to especially thank you all for watching the entire video if you made it this far i hope to see you all in the next video take care